So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Let's put some grease in the track loader before we get started. So for you guys out there that run track loaders on a daily basis, how often are you putting grease in the uh, loading arms here? The manual on this one suggests is, uh, I believe it says every eight hours or daily. Since I'm not running mine eight hours a day most of the time, I'm just doing it every eight hours. But I'd be interested to hear what a lot of you experienced operators out there are doing on your machines. Leave me a comment below. All right, guys, in the last video, we started spreading out this slate in front of the kiln. If you didn't see that video, hit the pause button and go watch it first, and then come back and watch the rest of this one. So I got this spread out pretty evenly in front of the kiln, and the whole point of doing this was to have a nice level pad in front of the kiln so I could drive the track loader directly into the kiln if I want to for loading and unloading. This is gonna be really nice. Before, there was probably about, I don't know, on this back side, about two feet over there where the slab was above the grades. So now we got it nice and level, but we got one thing we gotta fix. So the things we need to work on are these doors and the clearance below them so we can open them up all the way. This one right here is fine. I got it fixed whenever we done the initial uh, groundwork down here last night it opens up just fine but its brother over here is catching the ground now these doors are massive they're 12 foot tall they're about eight foot wide and they need a lot of clearance to swing open right there is where i need to take down some material i probably need to reduce that at least two to four inches because right now when the door does open it starts catching the slate right about there and I can't even get back to this part right here. So I know this is way too high in addition to this. So we need to work this down and get that pulled back to this area so we can have enough clearance to open the doors. I'm not a professional track loader operator. I don't move dirt for a living, but I'm a professional YouTuber, which means I can do all things. So I should be able to do this today. And I hope it goes pretty good see what happens if i'm doing this wrong i'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know you guys hang in there this is not all we're going to get done today this is just the first thing of many hopefully and one more thing here friends we'll get started i'm wearing my jk custom made boots today i showed these on instagram a few days ago and people have been asking me about them so later on in this video i'll tell you about them stay tuned for that I'll tell you what friends it sure is a nice day today in tennessee it's a little smoky though, or hazy rather is the better word. Those uh, fires in Canada that everybody's been hearing about, the smoke's made its way down here and it's not really smoky, it's just kind of hazy when you look up in the clouds. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is move these poplar logs out of the way. I was bumping into them yesterday. Question for you experienced operators out there. Should I be dragging this backwards or getting on the other side of it and pushing it toward me? Or pushing it or pushing it instead of pulling it? There's my question. Should I be pulling it away or pushing it away? I'm not sure what works best. I will say one thing. Sure is a lot of fun. Turn you guys around. I'm gonna try pushing it instead of uh, instead of pulling it. Seems like pulling it's gonna take forever. Maybe if I put my bucket down and kind of make a cut and push it, 
that will make it work faster. I don't know. Well, that seems to move a lot more material when I push it instead of pulling it. Pretty good sized bucket of slate right there. All right, I think this is what we'll do. Well, I need to smooth it out still back here behind me, but that might be enough to open up the door. So far, so good. It's rubbing right there, just right there. Right there, but man, just barely. I mean, it's just barely touching it. And this door does have that high dollar rubber gasket on the bottom, so I don't want to make it tight where it's going to drag on the ground. That will damage it and have to replace it. So I think I got it just about where I want it right here. If you guys help me remember this spot right there, I'll come in here and uh, drag that or cut that down just a little bit. Now, that should be enough. Key word, it should be. That's a rock. Get that rock out of the way. Another rock over there. All right. It's about as wide open as I usually make it, actually. Looks like we're in good shape. Good deal. Now we'll float that bucket and clean that up. I made a little bit of a mess right there on that side. Then we'll come back here and get all this extra slate. Now I really didn't need, but we'll find a use for it though. 
we'll pick it up and probably take it over here and start bat filling on this side of the kiln because it's also a good 20 inches or so above grade. guys i think this is finished up as far as the grade work goes i like how it looks everything looks pretty good i got it faded into the hill or as it goes uphill over there pretty good it's nice and level in front of the kiln and it looks pretty flat here on the bottom got a nice flat surface with that track loader that thing sure is handy to have around for jobs like this now we're supposed to get some rain over the next two days and that will really compact this down a whole lot better. And during the uh, course of running the track loader over this, unloading the kiln, bringing the big tractors down here, getting logs out of here, this stuff right here will really be solid. And it's not going anywhere. I like it. All right, my next thing on my list to do today is finish unloading the kiln. There shouldn't be much in here. That's some loud hinges on this thing. I need to climb up there and put some grease certs on these hinges, I guess. They could do something. I might get some of the uh, blue creeper and squeeze that in there. Right there it is, blue creeper, guys. No paid endorsement, but I sure do use this stuff all the time. It's a penetrating lubricant. If you're interested in it, there's a link down below. I keep these in every shop that I have, the sawmill, the garage, the timber frame. I even have a bottle of it in the truck. See if I can get some down in these hinges. In order to reach that top one, looks like I'm gonna need a ladder. Hopefully this works and gets the squeak out of this door. It'd be pretty bad if I do all this and it don't work. Well, so far so good. I think it worked. What do you guys think? Blue creeper for the win. So we don't have a whole lot in here. It's got some cedar, some four quarter pine, a little bit of eight quarter pine. Not a whole lot actually. All my insulation here I use for baffling and a whole bunch of stickers. I'm gonna need some pallet forts. I'm not carrying these all the way to the shop. The kiln is pretty much empty except for the baffles and some stickers. I got the last of the lumber out of here. That's mostly four quarter and eight quarter pine. 
and a few eastern red cedar there on the bottom. For those people that get bothered by that, we can also call that juniper, whatever you want to call it. Call it cedar around here. But now I need to build some pallets. So we need to saw up some poplar for some 10 foot boards. I need to make some shiplap that's 10 feet long. And I don't have any pallets that are 10 feet long. So let's go build some real fast. I need at least one for right now and one for later. And to build our open face pallet, we're gonna need some pine runners. These are 10 foot, I pre-cut them. They are actually 12 foot. And these are some scrap boards I had from a past project. I'm not even sure how long I've had them, but they are store-bought. And those are, I think, one by fours, 10 feet long. And to build a four foot open face pallet, you need six of those. And for the base of the pallet, all you need is some store-bought two by fours. I recommend these because they're kiln dried and they're the same dimension. That's real important for drying. So once you get your material cut to length, the first thing you wanna do is lay down your measuring tape and mark off all your two by fours or place them where they go rather. And these two by fours are gonna be on 16 inch centers, just like a stud wall. And that 16 inch spacing is pretty important. That's also what I use when I put my stickers between my lumber. I always space them at 16 inches. Now, if I was gonna be building about 20 of these at one time, I would probably go ahead and get some spray paint and mark off where all these go. It would make putting them together a whole lot faster you guys wrong for a 10 footer you just need nine two by fours not ten and for those of you wondering the technical name for these pallets are called open face pallets because there's wood on top of these runners or the two by fours but there's nothing underneath them and I'm assuming that's why they're calling that I'm just guessing but it sounds right to me so what's that's what we're gonna call them open face pallets so once you get your runner on here, this is the one by four. You just grab a pass load or whatever you got handy and start nailing it down. And these don't have to be perfectly square, but what they need to be is nice and flat. The flatter they are, the better your lumber is gonna dry. There you go, a 10 foot by four foot open face pallet for stacking lumber on, for kiln drying and for air drying. These are handy to have around. All right, guys, on the sawmill is some tulip poplar. We've already taken the slabs off of, but I think I've done this maybe two videos back. I can't remember. I think so. About two videos back, we took the slabs off. That's it. We took the slabs off this, and then the rain moved in, and it rained us out. So that's what happened. Uh, this is just over 10 feet long, and I need to break this down into six and a half inch wide cants. And once we do that, we'll saw them down at four quarter on the thickness. They'll go on the pallet that we just built probably tomorrow because it's getting late. I think I'll just get this sawed up. We'll do the pallets tomorrow because I need to saw up a bunch more poplar more than just this log. But this log and all the lumber that we're gonna be sawing up over the next few days, all this tulip poplar will go straight into the kiln green and we'll dry it down to about 8%. And it should take about 15 days in the kiln. It doesn't take very long. Now poplar is considered to be a hardwood, but it's very soft and it dries really fast. It's a really fast drying wood. It's really good to work with and it makes really nice shiplap, which is what we're gonna be doing with this. All right, so a few quick things here and we'll get started. On the sawmill, a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, give Joe a phone call. Cell phone number is in the video description. The second thing, guys, I wanna talk about these boots for just a minute here. 
These are made by JK Boots. And like I was saying earlier, I put a picture up on Instagram. Some of you guys have been asking me about them. Well, here's what I think about them. I got these a few months ago, and this is not sponsored by them or nothing like that. They're not paying me to tell you guys about them today, but they are really nice boots. It's a family business in Spokane, Washington. And I've never in my life had a pair of high-end boots to wear. And uh, I tell you what, guys, I should have done it years ago. They're expensive, but there's no buying boots every year. Cause I've been buying boots at like Tractor Supply, uh, Royal King, places like that my whole life. And every six or eight months, I'm replacing them with another pair of boots. I think these will hold up for a long time, guys. If you're interested in them, there's a link down below. That's not an affiliate link or nothing like that. I won't make nothing if you buy a pair, guys, I'm telling you. I'm just giving you my honest opinion on these boots. I really like them and I'll talk more about them in the future as I keep wearing them here. But so far, so good, I really like them. All right, guys, let's warm up this sawmill and get going. This is my last thing I wanna get done today. I've been at it all day, guys. I've been mowing all morning. I didn't even video that. You guys hang in there. Let's see what this poplar looks like. 